on this episode of Wrapped. The new guys are in the hot seat as a fresh crop of rookies experiences baptism by fire. That was a pain in the ass. <laughs> My first dance in here. Matt drives his first tow truck to a rollover. It's got everyone spitting bullets. Joey! Don't put your heads under the trailer. You can live without an arm, but you can't live without your head. And Bill pits rookie against rookie. I got this one. In the tow truck version of a street fight. That drama, Ross, I'm out of breath. Chicago has more than 20,000 miles of highway full of breakdowns, spills, and wrecks. It's a dangerous mess, and somebody's got to clean it up. Bill runs O'Hare Towing with his wife Marcy, his brother Joey, a fleet of high-tech trucks, and a team of dedicated drivers who risk their lives every day, ready to respond at a moment's notice to the next big wreck. O'Hare Towing has over 40 operators on staff. At any given time, because of turnover, growth, or promotion, over a dozen new operators are in some sort of training. It's an ongoing process. It usually takes four or five guys to get it, two or three good guys. Most of the training new operators receive is on the job. We can use the hook holes right there. All right, drop the car down a little bit. We're good. Good to go. As far as Bill's concerned, once you've met all the basic requirements, there's no better way to learn than by actually doing the job. At a loading dock in Peytonville, O'Hare has been called to the scene of a flipped trailer and spotter. Roll over on the side, got the spotter up in the air. So I'm waiting on uh, Joey to come. Me out. Help me out. Bill immediately sees it as a great training opportunity. Uh, we weren't in a traffic uh, congested area. We're not dealing with law enforcement. We're not dealing with fire department. And we're not dealing with an emergency situation where someone's trapped or hurt. And it's kind of a nice time to, to do those because we're in, in more of a controlled environment. But this environment will turn out to not be as controlled as Bill initially thinks. And it definitely will be a learning experience. And not just for the rookies. Looks like we got Rob. Joe's pretty sure he's gonna need another heavy duty truck. We got another 300 unit. We're hooked to the front of the spotter to keep it from going kitty wampus while uh, 902 and 903 pick up the trailer. Joe's concerned about the spotter, the specialized tractor used to haul the trailers around the loading yard. The two rotators are going to pick this trailer up with zero damn. The spotter, the minute we get some pressure off of it, that spotter is going to want to come down hard. What happens when it comes down as hard? It's just going to smash the out of it. We're going to get two half-inch chains and a ladder going to the front of that. After we get our trucks positioned, and once 308 gets here, we'll be able to position a lot easier. Joe's plan is to use the two rotators, the Mistress and Mia, to pick up and right the trailer, while another heavy-duty truck, 318, secures the spotter and gently lowers it back down. The other tow truck arrives. It's driven by rookie driver, Matt Bartlett. Give me two wind slides, do some change, guys. First dance is over here. Cedric has the truly dangerous job of climbing onto the precariously perched spotter to attach the winch lines. Here you go, the one on the right. Yeah, right around that hook. Matt, tighten up on that line. Good. All right, now the sucker can't go nowhere. Bill arrives and checks things out. Hey, Billy. He wants to see both how the job is going and how the new guy is doing. Matt pulled right in, backed in, we got hooked up, and he ran the controls perfectly. A little bit of good news, right? It's good. It'll be all right. I'm, I'm missing something because it looks too easy. <laughs> Bill may be cocky, but he's also very aware of the risks on a job like this. 
you know, a lot of things can go wrong. And so not only am I watching the job, but I'm watching where my guys are. And I got a new guy out here with me tonight, Matt. And um, this is all new to him. So I'm watching him close. I don't think the problem is going to be boom strength. I think it's going to be trailer side. Right. OK, pick it up a little bit. Let's see what happens. Get on your hands and knees and see if the wall's coming up. Oh, Can I go up a little bit? A little bit. No, stop. 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 The pallets inside the trailer are about to burst out of the side. Bulging. The trailer's supposed to be flat, right? All the loads on the side of the trailer is bulging out. If they lift the trailer too much, they could have an even bigger mess on their hands. Coming up, in danger of tearing the trailer. And I got this thing about a foot up and the side's giving out. Bill has to make a drastic decision. You're all coming apart. I thought you were running this truck. And later, Bill puts all the new drivers to the test. It's a chance for me to see what they know or what they don't know. I got this in the bag. Jose? Bill Graziana and crew are trying to lift a capsized tractor trailer in a loading yard. Bill thought it would be a good job to train a rookie on. We had a rookie, Matt, you know, on day two, he's, you know, he's out in a, a big tow truck and we're flipping over semis, so he's pretty happy. But it's starting to look like Matt is going to get a lot more of a lesson than anyone originally thought. Anytime it looks too easy, I'm missing something. They've run into a snag, a big one. I got this thing about a foot up and the side's given out. So uh, as quick as you can, okay? Bill and Joe have decided to call in some airbags to support the sides of the trailer as they lift it. It'll add more time and complexity to the job, but not as much time as unloading a trailer full of pallets, or worse, ripping out the sides. The trailer wasn't a, a spring chicken. We opted to uh, bring out air cushions to uh, support the load inside the, the wall as we uprighted it. Airbags are essentially big balloons that the crew inflates with a specialized compressor system as they lift the truck. The air inside the bags reinforces the walls of the trailer as it comes up. After about a 45 minute wait, the truck with the airbags arrives. Good. We only need four airlines. Each airbag is controlled by a separate valve on the compressor, so they can be adjusted independently. So we're going to suck that one down, and we'll start. All right, let's go. All right, let's go. Hang on, hang on. You keep an eye on those cables and just kind of keep following it a little bit. Now the airbags are doing the heavy lifting, and the winches on the truck are providing support. Don't put your heads under the trailer. You can live without an arm, but you can't live without your head. OK, well, what? yeah, if we hold it, then we can get this one in, and we got a good lift. We're going to win this battle. Joey! Your blocks and your cables are falling out because we're not following it with the thing. Cedric, you're all coming apart. I thought you were running this truck. You don't leave the controls no more. Okay. With the trailer secured by the airbags, Bill calls Matt over to talk him through the plan with the spotter. You see where the fifth wheel tilt is? That's yeah. got to go all the way down. So the, the, the jump on this tractor is once it's sort of level, it's going to want to tilt forward into the fifth wheel. So there's, that's the whole idea of the catch lines. The back of the tractor is up against that trailer. So as you keep, you don't want to hold any weight. You just want to be the catch. Because as it's going down there, this has got to go up. So leave this a little bit of slack. Not, no slack, just kind of on it, but not on it. And follow them equally. You know what I mean? Yep. OK? And I'll be watching you. As the trailer is lifted by the airbags, 
the spotter slowly begins to come down. A little bit. And Matt, with Bill's help, is guiding it perfectly. See, that front one, see how it's jumping? A little bit. There you go, a little bit. Follow, follow, follow. Perfect. The spotter is now back on all four tires. The load's dropping, we're good. You heard a load dropping? Yep. Get with Cedric and just boom out and push this thing over. All that's left now is to finish up riding the trailer. It's up, the load's intact, there's no damage, nobody got hurt. I've always told my guys that, you know, towing's not like uh, cattle branding. You're not supposed to leave your mark on the stuff when you're done. And uh, this particular one, I don't think you could probably tell anywhere where we hooked up or what we did. I, I feel very good about that. That was definitely a little tense there. It could have got ugly real quick. Coming up. Rookie Andy takes a treacherous test when he has to tow a tractor trailer into a tight spot. Can you find me a smaller parking lot next time? And later. Chris Brindle is probably the most experienced guy here. Chris struts his stuff in front of the toughest teacher in town. Damn, that's embarrassing. I'll let you uh, borrow the 3 h 2 wrenches for that, and the 3 quarter wrenches will pull those rails right up. On-the-job training is a critical component for preparing new O'Hare tow operators for the challenges and dangers they'll face in the field. See that rolls forward or back. And to one of the new ops, danger is nothing new. I am in the Army Reserves. I've been in for five years. Uh, I'm a recovery specialist in the military. When I joined the military, I joined with the attitude, I'm going to do something in the military I can do on the civilian side. Right now, Andy's on his way to Streeter for his first heavy-duty tow. He's been training with Dwight for the past few weeks. What are you aiming for? Right here. You're going under the axle? Yeah. OK. And now Bill feels he's ready to take charge. He will, though, have backup. Dennis, who is in 608, is down in Streeter. Uh, on scene already, waiting for me to get there. His truck isn't quite big enough to uh, haul the truck that we got to get. This is going to be my first heavy-duty tow with the company. I really try not to let my nerves get to me. Uh, but, of course, I am a little bit nervous. A semi hauling three new tractors hit a telephone pole, damaging the front axle. Dennis Miles managed to pull the truck into a parking lot before Andy's arrival. All right, where are we taking it? Um, he's trying. He's talking with his company. They might drop the trailer here if this guy will let them and just take the tractor to Bloomington. Right. Okay. The first thing they have to do is hook up to the damaged tractor. You got your Volvo hooks like that? I don't know. I don't have anything. I just got the truck, sir. I don't know. You got the new guy. Yeah. What do you want me to do? You need to find a set of hooks like that. OK. In the truck, and have two shackles. Two of the big shackles? Yeah. OK. With the shackles on, he now has to back his truck in so we can hook the underreach to the busted tractor. Everything is all hooked up, but the job isn't over yet. We're going to have to move the trailer over here somewhere. Now that I got to pivot here and I pivot on the fifth wheel, it's tricky. I may have Dennis do that. We'll see. But Dennis has other ideas. I didn't have anybody back my first tractor trailer up. I'll be there to guide him, and I'll help him out the best I can. But I can't back it up for him, because he won't learn from that. What do you think, boss man? Best advice I can give you for your first time backing up is just pull straight forward. The best way to back up is in a straight line. When in doubt, get out and look. Here goes nothing. 
I know, I'm stuck on the snow. I'm stuck on the snow. Hey, Dennis, lock off the street so I can pull all the way up. Can you find me a smaller parking lot next time? <laughs> I'll work on it. Just for you, Andy, I'll find you a nice small parking lot. Do very well. Just practice. It's the first one. It'll get harder as he goes along when he has to back into the parking lot off the street. Then, he, then he'll have some fun. Keep pushing it. Keep pushing it. Coming up, it's new guy versus new guy. It's a chance for bragging rights. In a battle of the flatbeds. This is what gets me going. It's Friday afternoon, and Bill Graziana has called a group of his flatbed operators to the yard at O'Hare's headquarters in Downers Grove for a little surprise. What we got going right now is a little uh, friendly competition from some of the new guys. Bill is pitting three of his rookie flatbed operators against each other in a timed competition to see who can recover a flipped car the fastest. It'll be a timed process, basically what the purpose is to upright it and load it on the bed. As soon as the bed's loaded and it's down and you're back in the cab, the time's off. It's a chance for me to see what they know or what they don't know. It's a chance for bragging rights. Joey and I are judging it. I want to see full safety gear. I want to see the whole process. If you have to reposition the truck more than once, um, there's going to be some time infractions for that. If uh, you roll the car over onto the flatbed, that would be a time infraction. Um, <laughs> have fun with it, fellas. But what the guys don't know is the rookies will be competing against a seasoned flatbed operator. By the way, there's one last entry. Um, uh, Marcy's taking one of the flatbeds, so she's going to do one as well. Get ready. We'll see if she can walk the walk and talk the talk. It's been 19 years. I know 20 it's been, years. I know it's been a while, honey, but I got faith in you. You're going to take uh, 419. This is not even <laughs> This is like being called out. She's a pretty confident gal. My money's on her. I've been known to uh, stretch the rules a little bit in my favor. So uh, we'll see. In addition to Marcy, the rookie competitors are Lamont Parker, Adam Belmont and Chris Brindle. The early favorite is Chris. Chris Brindle is probably the most experienced guy here, but he's at a little bit of a disadvantage because he's going to have to use a truck that he normally doesn't operate. I got this in the bag. This is fun to me. This, this is what I love about towing. This is what gets me going. We'll see. I'm excited to find out. And they're off. All the contestants back up and start getting their flatbeds extended. Quickly, Adam and Lamont already have chains on their cars and are already starting to upright them. Marcy's doing well too, although she's getting a little help. Straight forward. Back at the other end of the line, Adam has gotten his car rolled over. Lamont is doing the same. It's gonna fall right now. I'm too close, it's gonna fall on the bed. Marcy gets hers over too. Okay. While early favorite, Chris, is struggling to even get hooked up. I feel bad right now. I gotta jump. As the rest of the field starts loading their cars, Chris finally gets his back on four wheels. After attaching his safety chains, Adam finishes. Mm -hmm. Instead of drawing, Ross, I'm out of breath. 
followed by Marcy. Pretty proud of her. She had a little help. And then Lamont. I pulled up too many times. That's all he things. And bringing up the rear is Chris. Damn, that's embarrassing. Yeah, if I could do it again, I I'd do it differently. His time of 16 minutes and 10 seconds may seem slow, but after Bill calculates penalties for mistakes, Chris still may have a chance to win this thing. I got to get to a calculator. That's so many things I have to figure out here that it's just, it's impossible for me to call a winner right now. After calculating the infractions, Bill meets with the guys to give the official results. Chris had four extra deals that I thought were a problem, so I'm going to assess four minutes onto the time, which is 2010. Lamont had six issues I wanted to do, so his time is 1955. Marcy's time with her extra helpers is 1949. And Mr. Adam Belmont, you get the uh, bragging rights. You're at 1915. You had some extra time, so. It wasn't, just for the record, it wasn't the prettiest, but it counts. I'm with you on that. Congratulations. It was a big surprise to me, actually. When he announced that I won, I'm just like, am I dreaming? I'd, I'd pinch myself. Like, if I get that real thing on the side of the road, hopefully I could do it more efficiently and even safer. And Bill could see, see what I did, and he'd say, good job, big improvement. She's a trooper, and she jumped right in. She had fun with it. But she did have a lot of side help. I had four extra helpers with one of the people. First of all, that was never stated that I couldn't have the NASCAR pit crew. OK, well, I'm just making it up. I don't want anybody to think that I didn't notice it. No, time out. I can't help but jump just wants help. It's your, it's your song. You can sing it sometimes, however you want. And wait a second, I do have a thing. Maybe sometimes the helpers were not so helpful. <laughs>